Hey, good morning or afternoon. Sorry we're a little late here today. Some technical difficulties, so welcome to my messy home. Um, gosh, we got the new studio all set up and beautiful, but the computer decided not to function here this morning, so that's why I'm late and still doing a little bit of running here. Um, and so please bear with me for a moment here while I pull up some of the emails. And the first thing we're going to do is go into the heart space this morning because it's been hectic. All right. Here we go, you guys. All right. So if you've never been to one of the webinars before, I see we have quite a few new people on today. Um, we usually with the webinars we'll go through with 50 question friday um we'll just do a quick guided meditation to go into the heart space um then from there we'll answer some questions from the email and then those of you who do have questions that are here live we do have the questions tab here if you would keep your questions in the questions tab that way i can find them simple and easy enough and then you guys are welcome to use the chat side too um, I know a lot of you guys have become friends here and know each other and can chat. Um, we have some other folks on here too that are very knowledgeable in the tools and they can certainly help you out as well for um, you know some other questions that might come up. All right. So we have people from all over this morning. I know I have a friend, Leon, here who is 3 o'clock in the morning where he lives. Thanks for being here. Um, gosh, all kinds of cool people on today. Santa Fe, Philippines, Topeka, Kansas. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for being here. So we'll take the three breaths to go into the heart space. So again, close your eyes if you wish. We just put our physical attention onto the heart. Sorry, we put our attention onto our physical heart. And as you have your attention on the physical heart, that's where we see our light, the soul's fire. We take a deep breath in from the earth, bringing in that love and energy of the earth right up into the heart. Basically connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in her light, that healing, grounding light of the earth. Next, we connect to source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. And we take that breath in, breathing in all of creation into the heart. The third breath is breathing in from both earth and sky, bringing both those energies together within the heart, mixing that light of creation, the light of earth, and the light of you all together within the heart. That moves your consciousness from the head back into the physical heart where we are grounded and connected. All right. Awesome. So, again, let me pull up any of the questions that we might have had on email. Let's see. Um, one question is, do we have regular or occasional webinars and activation events? Um, you know, we, we try to do the 50 questions Friday weekly, but um, that hasn't always happened. And we also have been working out our new studio to get everything prepped there to begin to do the product videos again because um, for a while we had every time we had a new product come out we did a product video on it where we answered questions and explained more about the product um, we're intending to create the time to go through and redo all of those videos at one time but we're going to start with all the newer products here first um, and as far as other video stuff goes, it is something that's always been my intention to get my sister Brenda in and start to do more of more of these videos, the, the activations, the, the giving you the tools, 
like going into the sacred space, the heart, um, you know, and start to share those tools more. So let's see. You know, I think we are clear on email questions. So we'll start off with um, just some basic questions about the tensor tools and the energy work. And then we'll move on to the chalice rings and I'll discuss a little bit about them and then we can answer a few questions about them. Um, let's see. So, Leon, can you speak on the field of neutrality? I found the chalice is a completely pure energy that does not allow the mind to get in control. Um, so, yeah, the field of neutrality was one of the steps that, you know, that allowed us to start to bring in that chalice ring energy. So the field of neutrality was a step kind of above where we had the harmonic creation field trio and we were using that space to, to hold people in, to hold ourselves in, to do the energy work of bringing in our light, of doing the release work. Um, so then the field of neutrality came in um, is something that we can access. There's, there's videos out there or I know an audio for sure to access that field of neutrality where you simply go into the heart, you go to um, the pineal, you do the balancing of the brain hemispheres, you go to the quantum mind, that field of all knowing, and then you go farther into that field of neutrality. And that field of neutrality is one that um, we put it into the pyramids, the, the pyramid, the ascension pyramids that we create. You can find that field of neutrality as well. And that field of neutrality, it's just one of those spaces that was the precursor to working with this chalice energy and that it's not a doing thing. It's being in the heart, being connected and, and allowing. Um, it's a surrendering. It's a surrendering to your higher soul self because we're creating that phenomenal connection to where you just surrender to the soul. Um, so as far as the field of neutrality, you know, that's kind of the basics that we've been using the field of neutrality for. And again, that was a stepping stone to bring in this chalice ring energy. Uh, let's see. Can we wear the chalice pendant with the other pendants? Um, yeah, you can totally utilize the chalice ring with, with any of the energies. Um, and I suggest that if you do start working with the chalice ring, um, to also work with it by itself, it's, it, um, you know, when we're working with these higher energies, um, you know, and you're working with like, let's say a golden fire ring. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't even want to answer a lot of these questions because they are exper experiential questions. They're experiential. They're individual for each person. I would suggest, um, trying the chalice rings on their own, but you can certainly wear them with other tools. Um, let's see, the other question, another question, if you already have an ascension pyramid, how do you energetically access the chalice energy in the pyramid? And here towards the, the end of the show, we'll definitely work with this chalice energy and how to access it. Um, so basically the pyramids now, the ascension pyramids, are holding that energy of the chalice ring. And in all reality, all the tools that we create here at Twisted Sage Studios are gonna be carrying that chalice energy with them. Um, it's just, even once you learn to access it, you don't need any tools, obviously, to access that energy. Um, it's kind of like an attunement to it. Um, and that we're gonna be doing today is basically just attuning to knowing that energy and then you can access it anytime without the tools um but to actually access it with the tools using um you know the chalice rings themselves or the pyramid themselves versus using like a golden fire ring it's just easier to find that single energy in there because like the golden fire rings and a lot of the other tools are just full of all different kinds of things um let's see does the silver chalice ring bring through a higher energy than copper like with the regeneration rings so 
the the new chalice rings we've actually been working in a different way of anchoring that chalice ring energetics into the copper it's more into the crystal structure of it than it is like let's say into the tensor field of it so the the quick answer to if a silver and a copper can hold that energy of the chalice chalice ring the same basically they can hold that energy the same they, they totally do they, they carry that same energetic it's just that with the silver um, chalice rings it still is a little different i mean you can feel the difference between the silver and the copper rings but they're still going to be holding that chalice ring energetics the same so you can still access it the exact same um, let's see renard with the everything rings does that include the energetic of the cosmic sun disk as well so with the everything rings that that came through here um, a couple months ago basically they can contain all of the energetics of all of the tensor tools created up to that point um, you know and of course they do contain the energetics of the chalice too but um, so the everything rings do hold they you can access that energetics of the cosmic sun disk through those chalice rings yes or I mean through the everything ring the everything ring you can actually sit with it and bring through access whatever it is that we've created through there um, the everything ring again it's just it's so full it's so chaotic that um, you know you really have to sit with it and have that intent of what you're accessing and you can certainly bring through that cosmic sun disk the energetics of it um, because even like with the everything ring you can take that everything ring and you can intend that that is a tensor field generator and that it flows the energy in that fashion. Because that's the thing about a standard tensor ring is it only creates a column of light, just a single column of energy, which is a counter-rotating vortex on its own. Um, but the um, toruses create a, a vortex flow of energy. That's why they're the, called the torus. It's the tube torus. So that toroidal field, that flow of energy, that you find in the cosmic sun disk, you can use that everything ring and make the intention that it flows the energy in that fashion, or that it, it, it that it flows the energy like a tensor field generator would, and let that just expand. Um, you know, and how long that will hold that for is how long you hold your attention onto it. And I, you know, I'm sure that. You can get to the point to where you don't have to have your conscious awareness onto that anymore to be creating that same field. Um, but it, it's definitely something to play with. Those everything rings are pretty powerful rings. Um, I can't touch them anymore, though. <laughs> they, 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 they burn. They're, they're tough to make um, for me because, yeah, that, that energy, I just don't really jive with as much anymore. They're still a phenomenal tool. Um, let's see, can the new wearable chalice rings be folded like the heck of clasp and worn that way? Yeah, we've, we've had a lot of people asking about creating the heck of clasp style, which I don't have one sitting here, the heck of clasp style in these new chalice rings. And yeah, we're working on a lot of different tools in the chalice rings, but we um it's it's a process we like to be able to work with the tools for a little while as we create the prototypes just to make sure that we're putting something out there that is one feasible for us to make and two we'll have that longevity we we don't want to put something out and then recall it back um, because we found something in the workings of it so the HECA clasp, we would like to make that HECA clasp. We actually have some going right now um, to, to work with. And um, so, yes, we, we do intend to bring through the HECA clasps in this chalice ring energetics, but don't ask when that could be. It could be between now and six months from now. Um, just really don't know. 
So let's see. Can these new chalice ring? Okay, I already answered that one. All right, so let's see. You're going to head on over here to the chat and see what's happening. Well, hey, Valerie, yes, I'd be interested to be a guest on your podcast. Uh, please email me. I will put my email in here because after I'm done here, I will totally forget everything that happened here. So I'm just going to pop in my email address right down here at the bottom, which is twistedsage at hotmail.com. And please do email me, Valerie, and I would love to join you on your show. Uh, let's see. So just reading through. All right. Questions again. Um, Kendall's asking, will you post the older 50 question Fridays? Oh, I just lost your question and disappeared. Um, the older 50 question video, the last one's like three or four months old. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll make sure that we are caught up on posting. It's We haven't done hardly any 50 questions Fridays. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a transformational time and for quite some time I kind of stayed away from everybody and everything. Um, what type of results are people getting using the Everything Ring for radionics? You know, so Robert, that question, um, the everything ring actually came out during the, the the Masters Radionics Convention here in South Dakota. And um, when we were creating that ring, we had the intention of creating it for radionics and we were putting all the stuff in and it became the everything ring. Um, so that that first radionics convention, we have probably about 50 50 of those radionics rings out there that people have been using with radionics. Um, and those folks I usually don't hear back from too often. We've heard back from a few folks who've been, been using them. Um, so basically the everything ring, when you utilize it, whether you're utilizing the ring itself or you're putting on it on a radionic instrument to broadcast, um, you have to start with your, your intent of what you're bringing through really but it doesn't have to be a hard intention, a hard focus, um, especially working with any of these tools. It, it's not, our intentions aren't powered by our mind um, and our will and things like that. Maybe in the old paradigm, things were powered by, you know, force and intent. The intentions that we use anymore are, they're a soft intention. So basically when you go to do something like let's say you're putting this ring around on your shoulder for healing. You don't have to sit there and be like, okay, I'm using this for healing. Um, you putting the ring there, your intention is already there. And the more that you can step out of the way of holding that space with your mind, with your thought, with your mind, the better it's going to work. Um, because some of the intentions can limit us. And what we're doing with the new tools is unlimited. It's, it's only limited by our imagination and our mind and our willingness to perceive, allow. Um, so we are our own limits anymore with these tools. So using your intention um, with radionics, I got it half on a tangent there, Robert, but um, using the tools for radionics, the everything ring, um, yeah, just have your intention on what it is that you're that you're working with, which is right there already when you put the ring with your equipment for that specific broadcast. Um, and I have not heard what other people are getting back with using the rings with radionics. I'm really not sure. Um, Let's see, you, re you recommend to not wear copper tools and first wear in the silver regeneration. Does this include copper tools in my bag or sleeping rings, etc., or just what I have on my body? Okay, so when we first, you know, that was when we first came out with the infinite light pendant 
I look like Mr. T because I had on all the different tools, all in copper. Then when the silver ring came along and I put it on, it felt great. But as soon as I took off all of my other tools and I was just wearing that silver infinite light pendant, that's when I felt myself just skyrocket. Um, you know, so I don't necessarily recommend anything on wearing the tools except for, you know, trying them by themselves. And whenever you wake up in the morning, you know, just find which one or ones resonate for you for the day. So, you know, for me, I've been wearing one of our prototype chalice rings. This is everything that I wear in my our first chalice ring bracelets, which I took these off for the very first time last night in the months that we've created these. Um, last night's the first time I took these off ever since, since they were made. Um, so, you know, the, the regeneration rings, they were a higher, crisper, cleaner frequency in the silver versus the copper. Um, so that's, you know, one of the reasons that we, that I stopped wearing the copper. The copper, to me at the time, just wasn't holding the frequency that I needed to be at. But that's the thing with these tools is, and it's not a judgmental thing, but you need to find what it is that resonates with you. Um, these chalice rings are not for everybody right now, you know. And that's the same with all these tools is, is you just have to go in and be open and receive, you know that that energy from the photos of, of the picture of the products of, of all the different tools and allow that that energy of the photos to come through to find what resonates most instead of the names or descriptions because that that would be the mind so if you can just sit with it openly um, and that's the same with when you put on any of your tools in the morning is just sit with it and see just what draws you see what resonates um, but you know, I still I still have all of my copper tools I sleep with. I mean, I have my big Gaia spheres, my Gaia sphere, my Taurus, my big rings under the bed. I mean, I still utilize all of my copper tools. Um, I just, you know, most of the time my my being just doesn't want to wear them. Um, so yeah, just have to keep checking in with yourself daily to see. Um, let's see. Have you experimented with placing the everything ring on the Ascension Pyramid? If so, can you share any outcomes? Yeah, we've totally experimented with putting that everything ring on the pyramid and it amplifies it. It feels pretty physically intense. Um, you know, to me, I think the pyramid itself is in that field of neutrality is, is bringing through what is most needed out of that every ring for the person at that time. So, I would totally try putting that everything ring with your ascension pyramid because it is going to amplify a lot of the energies that you need, um, you know, at that time. So, yeah, the, the everything ring with the pyramid to me is, is a great fit. And I wouldn't use it all the time. I would use it when I am actually wanting to do the work. If something comes up that I feel I need to have a release to because... I have this loop or whatever it is or something that comes in my awareness whatever it is that that you are aware of that you want to work with to release to harmonize to look more into to see why it is there which you don't ever have to ever look and see why but when it comes to your awareness yeah totally use that everything ring with the pyramid and take the breath surrender and let it do its thing uh, let's see, Marie, I have experimented with placing the everything ring on the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are you reading the question? I'm getting lost here. Uh, see none. Do you douse the bobus life force energy of of every ring? No. No, actually, um, gosh, we, we haven't played around with um, dowsing the, the, the life force of the rings in quite some time. Um, that's still one of the back burner projects is we're going to create a, a pendulum base we can actually charge and connect your pendulum to some of the authority templates. But then also that space that's held there with that pendulum base, um, we're going to have a whole different scale because the bovis life force scale, 
you know, when Brenda looks at it, it's simply how much light you're holding. And so, yeah, we totally, for fun, want to make that that new scale of light. You know, probably just maybe we just use stick with the bobus, but since everybody knows that, but it will be a light. And we have had people that have doused, you know, our our tools for that bobus life force energy. Um, let's see. I'm planning to rearrange and move my ascension pyramid into another room. Do I need to re-anchor every time I physically move it? Um, no, whenever you set up the ascension pyramid, you know, just have the intention that the energetic one stays there and it will anchor in and stay. And then when you move your physical pyramid to another space and set it up, as soon as you set it up, it anchors in. And then your other space will still have it as well. So it's it's a replicable energy um let's see is there a feminine feminine energy with a chalice ring or do you find that it doesn't work with neutrality so gosh you know it is so far beyond because the chalice ring energetics is not based in duality the chalice ring energetics is a transcending of everything dual, everything duality. So there is no male, there is no female um, within this chalice ring energetics. And even in that field of neutrality, that's where you're going to, is you're going to beyond the physical of where there is a feminine and masculine. Because that is very much, um, the feminine and masculine is very much within physical incarnation um when you get to you know higher spaces it's it's just there there's it's not the same i mean you could still say that there may be genders and different qualities but it's feminine and masculine is way too small of a box to to try to see it in um so it's it's the cool thing of having feminine, feminine and masculine and even going way beyond that. Sorry, I guess I scratched that last sentence. I really, um, I was feeling something with it, but I can't quite put it into words um, with that feminine and masculine. What tool would be the best to help you sleep through the night? Um, you know, that's a good question, Brenda. A lot of people have great luck with just the golden fire and light wands. Um, that's been a popular one for sleep. Um, the quantum healer, the little pendant, that's been, you know, we've heard people with that. And I know when we first started making the practitioner rings, the large practitioner rings, um, that was also one that people talked a lot about where, you know, you put that ring up at your headboard and you sleep within that column of light. Um, in, in that one, you know, using the large practitioner ring, some people report, very few people report that they have an unsettled sleep for a few nights, like two or three nights, and then after that they sleep well. Um, so it just really depends on what it is that's going on, truly, Brenda, on on finding something that helps you sleep through the night. You know, if it's if it's electromagnetic stuff, then you know, being within a large ring or having any of the tools around is fantastic um the mini ascension pyramid has been a, another popular one for sleep time and most of us that have those mini ascension pyramids usually keep them in our in our rooms in our sleeping area um i keep one of my i keep mine in my daughter's room so i i don't have one in my room <laughs> but last night was the best night i slept and i took everything off um and last night was the best i've slept in quite some time uh, my friend is getting hit with energy from left to right every time she enters into a new space, especially in hotel rooms. What do you recommend to help clear the space and for her to carry? So, you know, you can work on the space itself with, with any of the more environmental tools like a golden fire generator or one of the quantum grid points, the little pyramids. Um, you know, usually a golden fire generator is a great one to bring into places like hotel rooms and, and things like that to where 
you're more sensitive to the dense energy that is there. Um, but really having a pendant on your person is in, in being able to stand within your own light and in be solid in that, which the, the, the tools help, we're in pendants. Um, then when you walk into the environment, it's also could be a program or a belief about that affecting you. So when you wear the tools and she puts on a pendant, you know, um, you have to try to also catch the mind and allow have the mind truly believe that this will clear those dense energies so that it's not going to come in and affect you. Um, you know, because I mean, gosh, we've seen some pretty wild stuff in our times of working with people where there isn't really an energy out there outside of them that's affecting them, but it is their beliefs and their own traumas and everything else that they create this stuff and it becomes debilitating, but there's nothing actually there causing it. It is their own. Um, because we are powerful creators is what I'm really trying to say with this. So if you, if your friend wears the pendant, um, you know, and it can be any of the pendants that we have there, they're all going to bring you more into the heart. They're going to bring, you know, you more centered, aligned, connected and, and assist you in that protection is going to allow you to transform what comes into your field. So um, as far as what tool to recommend for, for a pendant, um, you know, I'd almost say one of the chalice ring pendants for, you know, copper ones are one of our least expensive pendants right now is those, um, those copper chalice ring pendants. Um, a quantum healer would be a good one. Um, and that, again, that's another one of the lower lower price pendants on our scale there too. And those are both pretty phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I would just recommend any of the pendants that you're drawn to for her. Uh, Jumbo, can we use the chalice rings to cleanse and energize crystals and gemstones? Yes, you certainly can. Um, the chalice rings are going to still do that work with the water, with the crystals. Um, they're going to be doing that cleaning, clearing, connecting. You know, and with crystals too. So I haven't worked much with this with crystals, and I am kind of curious too. But yes, it will definitely clean and clear and energize crystal. Uh, and then let's see, Brenda, my grandson feels like there's an energy in his room and he's not comfortable with. What's the best way to clear that? A golden fire generator you know just having a golden fire generator in the home and just get the two and a half inch one that's that's the most economical one out of them all they all work the same all the golden fire generators um so having one of those in the home is gonna it will cross over that ghost that wayward um and yeah that that's that's what i would recommend Brenda, for for, for your grandson's room. Uh, will the everything ring be available in other sizes or as a generator? No, you know that everything ring that we have is, that's the only everything ring that we plan on creating. Um, it's just that one single ring in that one single size. It's, um, you know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the only one that we really plan on creating is that particular size of, of everything ring. And again, um, you can certainly turn that everything ring into a tensor field generator. You know, it was kind of interesting because in the beginning when I was trying to actually make a tensor field generator generator with the everything ring, it was my intention when I was twisting the wire. And when we put the generator together, the four rings, it didn't feel right. And so I cut it apart and found just the one ring was creating a tensor field generator um, because that was the intention of that ring. And in that, again, that goes beyond my intention when I'm creating it. So you can take an everything ring and have your intention that that is a tensor field generator. Um, all right. And back to the chat side here to see what's happening. 
Oh yes, uh, the Facebook stories and posts. Yeah, if, you, if you're not, um, if you want to check out some of the things that I've been that Brenda and I have been playing with, um, you know, some of the soul level stuff. That I've, I've actually been posting. I have four different stories on Facebook here on my personal page, Brian Vesco on Facebook. Um, that there's there's been some stories on what we've been doing with ourselves on a soul level and we've been utilizing that energy of the chalice ring for that um and we don't post a lot of that stuff like on the website and things because you know we we have quite a broad spectrum of people who who are attracted to the tools and go to the website and use the tools and really don't want to get too woo woo on you know a lot of people who are just stepping in um which is also why we're making another website here that'll be available soon, which is Dakota Sage. And it's going to have a, quite a few of the same products, but it's not going to have all the woo-woo associated with it. It's just going to be presented as good feeling tools, um, good feeling jewelry and pendants. Uh, so let's see. And, and again, um, I'm going to go through the chat side here and pull out some of the questions that have been going. Um, so I was just reading Tambra's question about if the Taurus pendant would be beneficial to her. You know, um, do you have the infinite light pendant, the quantum healer, and many more? You know, Tambra, I would actually consider working with this chalice energy um you know if, if if you're thinking about getting the taurus pendant i i would actually hold off on that uh tambra and maybe start working with this chalice energy we do intend to create a line of tools this is going to be one of the larger pieces um and we don't know when these are going to be out we're making um we're working with a company right now who is going to make bales for us, the little piece that attaches to the top of the pendant. And once we have everything in place, we'll be releasing, you know, other tools in this chalice energy. But yeah, Tambra, I'd suggest working with that chalice energy before, you know, stepping in and getting a Taurus pendant. Um, I mean, still love to make one for you, but I'd, I'd, I'd hold off on it if, if it is what I would feel. Um, and let's see, Carla's asking, will soft intentions work with the older tools as well, like the generators? Yes, you know, anytime that we do put an intention, like let's say into your harmony generator that will hold and broadcast the intentions out there, um, you can still state your intention there when you're holding it because it just kind of helps the mind get clear too on the intention, but yet when we do those intentions, we just let it go then. Um, and we try not to hold it in that rigid state of something exactly as you want it. Um, and the more that you just let go of it after you put that intention into your generator and just let it do its thing, the better it does work. The softer the intentions that we have, the more it allows the soul in the universe to respond because we have to allow the soul in the universe to work in a different way than we might see it. And that's something that my sister has always said with the newer tools is that we can put our intentions into them, but they might not come out how we perceive and want them to. Um, and again, it, it just limits it when we put a really strict intent of how we want to see it come. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. And there, Leon helped answer that too. Uh, the intention work with generators, such as the balance and harmony, is ideal for intention work. Any of the new frequency tools are unique, as he says. <laughs> and that's very true. So, yeah, if, if you really are wanting to, you know, have your intentions the way that you see them and want to broadcast those intentions into the world, the harmony generators are great for that. Um, but then, yes, when you get into some of the, like the golden fire generator, we always say that the golden fire generator doesn't hold and amplify intentions. It does, but 
it doesn't do the ones that you have that hard intent from your mind of what you want something to specifically look like. Um, if you can still put your intention into the golden fire generators, but it's one of those that it'll only bring through what is in your highest and best interest and good according to your soul. So you can put your intentions into there, your hard, strict intentions, but it's going to take the ceiling off of those and allow it to be bigger. Um, I hope this is, <laughs> I hope I'm sharing and explaining this right, um, uh, to, to be received, that is. All right. A lot of great things you guys are chatting here. Right. And Chris, curious about which tools you would recommend for carrying in my pocket. I have the Shaman's Wand, Golden Fire Light Wand, and Fairy Wands. You know, that Shaman's Wand, I I love that Shaman's Wand still. And, and that is a great one to carry in the pocket. And, you know, really carrying any of these tools in your pocket is just having them in your field like that's a fantastic way to do that, Chris. Um, so it can be anything. Um you know, I've been carrying a, a copper chalice ring in my pocket. And I, I've always liked to carry a, a ring in my back pocket for some reason. And so I've been carrying a copper chalice ring in my back pocket. Um, yeah, so I I don't know what other ones I could recommend, Chris, except for, yeah, I'd love for you to try the chalice ring. All right. Let's see We've got some questions in the question tab here. Uh, Brenda asks, if I wear my Taurus pen in my pocket, is that as effective as the new? I find it a bit heavy. Um, oh, as effective as the neck. Thank you for the clarification there. So if you wear the Taurus pendants, um, you know, near that heart, that physical heart, the heart chakra, quantum heart if you wear that torso pendant you know up here near the chest it really does help to bring through and open up more but yet having that torso pendant anywhere on your person i always sleep with my torso pendant right by my head at night too i take it off and sit by my pillow um as long as your physical body is is in contact or is close you know as long as that Taurus pendant is on your body somewhere on your person it is still going to be doing the great things the connecting the working with the physical um you know bringing in more of that Taurus energy into the physical because that's really that Taurus pendant is a lot of that is about as well as the cosmic sun discs is it's working on our physical um it's putting that higher spin rate to the cells. Um, it's allowing us to hold even more light. So, yeah, you can, you can totally still wear that Taurus pendant in your pocket. Um, and let's see. And how about putting the everything ring and the chalice ring together? You know, actually, um, I think on the chalice ring bangles page there's been some um some good testimonials there uh, a couple of the guys that that are that i resonate with what they're doing with the tools and what they're seeing um you know they've been playing with that whole concept too but you know the chalice ring and the everything ring are two such different 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 energies you can put them together though Let's see. So, yeah, I think we're going to start stepping more into the chalice ring stuff here, you guys, um, and start talking about those. So, all right. So, Jumbo, what's the chalice ring's effect on our DNA? What is the effect on our DNA? Um, can't answer that one right now. It's because it's it it's it is working on our quantum dna it's working on our soul level dna if you want to say it that way um 
there's a lot about the chalice ring too as as we get into it here um that i'm just not going to answer or be guided not to answer because or try to answer or try to limit or box um because of the fact that that's just what it said it said be easy with this description um, and let people experience it in their own way is really you know and that's what they've always said with the tools our, our guidance has always said of the tools is to never put them in a box that's why we you know we don't send little cards on hey this is what you do with them because we're not ever supposed to put these in a box because of what some people are doing with them is is totally out of the realm of what he even considered doing with these tools um you know again even and especially this newer stuff the only limitations is our beliefs are programmed our imagination um question from wendy what about the rna in the shots you know yeah that's another subject that i probably won't even step into you know there's so much going on out there and um i try to stay in my lane as much as i can anymore um but as far as taking the shots i mean oh my goodness don't do it but if you feel you need to change it shift it you know that's with anything they put in your body um you know like my daughter i guess i'm i i have no belief in vaccines myself but that's my own personal it's like with my daughter and i'm not talking about covid because i'm not even step into that puddle but like with my daughter when she received um you know she got vaccinations a few of them when she was a kid because that's what her mom's family that's their paradigm and um so I did appease them and allowed my daughter to have a few of the vaccinations when she was a baby, but we always made sure that we could shift and change those to where they were actually beneficial to her on all levels. Um, and so, yeah, if, you know, if, if you're getting some kind of, um, any kind of Western medicine that you are ingesting, injecting, taking, do the work with it without the fear. Just go into the heart space. Um, send it as love. Send it your love. Um, you know, just run light into it. And trust and believe that it is shifted and that it is now in your highest and best good. Um, so anyway you know so much so much of the stuff out there is really heavy really heavy and heavy in the beliefs and heavy in the emotions and some of it's meant to be that way and that's all it is meant to be is dividing anger inciting heavy we don't need any of that um, Chris, what's the energetic difference between the small and large chalice rings and the silver and copper? So there's actually no difference between the the size of the chalice rings. They're actually all from the same. They're all the same. Um, it's just that you have maybe a larger field of influence, you know, a, a larger column, and and then that's just how we work with them on the physical. So like a a pendant it's just simply creating a smaller column of light but really how we're going to use the chalice rings is we're going to access the energetics there so let's actually step in because we're going to be running out of time here pretty shortly so let's um we, we will, won't do any more questions we're just going to go straight into i'll give a quick intro about the chalice ring um which you guys have all read i'm sure and again a lot of that is is that we're supposed to be easy with the with the um description so and you guys have probably read on there too on some of the ways that we use it um and one of the neat ways in a 
yeah, I'm pretty sure it's mentioned on there about how we just take that energy back to, you know, like prior to your moment of conception or, or prior to when you had a huge argument with your loved one or whatever it is. And we, we sit in a peaceful space with that chalice energy and we imagine that time and we imagine taking that energy back and just allowing that energy to flow out and then we leave it um you know because anytime that we we do energy work that we go back to prior to the moment that something happened and we can shift and change that um it's just you know that's that's part of actually some modalities out there is going back prior to the moment of something happening and shifting it. Our friend um, Ken Graydon in Australia was selling organ regeneration processes. That's some of the processes he did. That's, you know, and those are pretty powerful. My sister, she cut her finger to the bone. She heard it click her bone and she immediately grabbed it and took herself back prior to that and just held that energy there and she let go, didn't bleed, hasn't ached, healing up perfectly. Um, yeah, all kinds of cool stories like that. Okay, so I'm just going to close this sidebar tab with the comments and questions. And we'll do um, a little bit of meditation here, you guys. I would like to introduce you to the chalice rings and the energy of the chalice. Um, the energy of the chalice ring. So this energetic, it is, it is very pure. It's a crystal clear energy. Um, and actually, if you'd like to close your eyes, we'll just go into a meditation here as a group. And again, just putting your attention onto your physical heart where you find your light. And breathing in that light of the earth into the heart. Breathing in that light of creation, source, soul, God into the heart. However you see that. And then as you take that third breath, breathing in both into the heart. And you drop your consciousness right into your heart. From there... We're just going to start holding. We're just imagine us all sitting around in this giant circle. Those of you who are watching afterwards on the recording and those of us who are here live. And we're just holding that space with the heart and we're just being still and quiet. And now we're going to pull this energy of the chalice through. You may feel it in the body, you might feel it in the heart, or perhaps you feel the crown opening and expanding. So again, this is an easy energy. So I'm just trying to offer this energy to each and every one of you because it's not one that you can radiate out. This energy is a one of allowing. There you go. It is an allowing. And it's a surrendering with the soul. So remember, surrender. Surrender, and the ego has a hard time with surrender. But it's a surrender with the soul. So if you can allow the mind, the body, the you, to surrender to the soul. And then have an allowing with this chalice ring energy. That crystal clear, pure light.
you guys are holding this space beautifully. And we're holding this space within this sacred space for each and every one of us to be able to access that energy. It's a peace, it's a calm. And once we access that, there's not a doing with it. We just sit and be. And again, if, if you need to do something, just know that your soul is the one that is going to be doing the doing. Your soul is going to be very happy to catch this energy. We just need to hold it within our body, within the heart, or the head, or every cell, and just allow that energy to be there. And that really is all there is with this chalice energy. It is, it's such a soft, peaceful energy. I'm just reading some of the comments here. Feels like it would make a great practitioner ring to be able to sit in and meditate in. <laughs> For sure, Brooke. Um, Julie starts sneezing. We're receiving the energy. <laughs> That's great. Leon, crown opened up. Awesome. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it took me a while to feel and hold this energy myself. Um, you know, quite a few of the first rings that I tried to bring in, um, I could not anchor them in. Brenda had to be the one that anchored in, you know, all those first new rings um, until I was able to be with this energy um, to be able to anchor it in. Feel so relaxed is one comment. Renard definitely felt in my head and my soul held me as I laid in its lap. Wow. Feel that. That's beautiful. Best I've felt in ages, Leon. That's awesome. And he's around on two hours of sleep. Feel the present moment and out of my head. That's fantastic. Um state of being we're beginning to live in yes you know and that's it is this chalice energy has shifted my entire being it's it's pretty amazing um carla also light felt a pulse in the heart so yeah it's it's one to really sit in a quiet quiet space with and you know, and you don't have to go back to this space right here that we're all holding, you know, through the video. As we all hold this space, we're holding it throughout all time. And the more of us that are holding this space of just being quiet with this energy, the more other people are going to be able to find this as well. Um uh, and Leon's asking, can you touch on Brenda feeling it more in the heart? And I mentioned feeling it in more of the head. Yeah, you know, um, for me, I was not able to access that chalice energy, you know, in the heart or in the quantum heart. Um, you know, I myself have always had that hard time with finding that quantum heart and utilizing that. But for me, my path is a little bit different with it. Um, but with Brenda, she has such a huge heart. I mean, yeah, Brenda, if you know her or know of her, she is very much one of the biggest heart aligned centered being I've ever met on the planet. And 
she's the one who is out there on this leading edge in bringing through these energies. Um, and she does it through the heart. Um, and so the thing with it tingling in the crown too, that's just kind of one of the places that it does open up. I mean, this, this energy works throughout your being. Um, so anyway, totally shooting through my feet, through the spine and out to the universe. Beautiful. Basking in the peace. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, and yeah, to, you know, like I was starting to say, you can access that chalice energy. Now that you have that attunement, you can just imagine coming back to that space that we're all holding and just jumping in right there. Um, you can look at the pictures on the website of the rings and access it that way. Um, you know, this, this energy is going to be something else. Yeah, I had that one up over the camera there. Um, all right. I guess I'll sign off here, you guys. And thank you for being here very much. And we will see you next time. All right. Take care. Have fun.